An update on my Monocentropus Balfouri communal. Hello tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. My topic for today is my Monocentropus balfouri communal again. And the reason for that is because I'm doing an update on it. Um, I had a couple of subscribers that asked me if I could possibly record the webbing that goes on within, you know, what, because they're in a new enclosure and they have to set up their dens. Then they wanted to see, you know, what all the tarantulas did at night to web up their enclosure and set up their new dens. Frankly, I was curious myself, I wanted to see it, so this was something that I had planned anyway. And um, what I did was I set up a camcorder at night and I dimmed the lights and uh, recorded what was happening overnight so that I can put, a, put together a time lapse of, I think it was like six nights that I recorded it for. Now, there's three problems that go along with that. Number one is because it's dim light, the footage is not exactly great. When you have dim light, the footage gets a little bit grainy and it's hard to see. Um, so it's not exactly the best footage. I think it's okay and, and you can see the progression over the video where the lights got a little bit dimmer and dimmer. I kind of played with that so that I could, see, I could record at the lowest light setting but still have enough light so where you can see what was going on. So that's what I did on that and that was an issue that I had. The other issue was that um, my camcorder only recorded for two and a half hours. So I would let, leave it set up at night, record that two and a half hours and hope that anything that was gonna happen was gonna happen within that two and a half hour window. And usually it did. You could tell when you compare the footage to how the enclosure looks the night, the next morning. And if there's not much difference with what you saw in the footage and what you see at the in the morning, then you realize that you know pretty much nothing else happened after that. And I, I think I was lucky enough to capture stuff within the two and a half hour period. And the last issue that I have is that when you record for two and a half hours, that's actually 60 gigabytes of footage or memory that, you've, that you're storing. So on that computer, I keep downloading 60 gig, gigabytes of memory. Over six days, that's 360 gigabytes of memory. And that's not including what I'm shooting here and what I shoot afterward and so on. So that's a lot of memory to hold on to your computer, especially if your hard drive's not that huge. So I kind of have to stop it at this point compile that footage, turn it into a video so that I can dump it off my hard drive and put it onto an external hard drive so that I don't have to clog up my hard drive with all that memory that it's taking up. So those are issues that I had to deal with. Um, I hope you enjoy the footage. This is the time lapse of what went on from the day that I put them into the new enclosure to six days afterward when I actually fed them again, which was feeding day, which was like on a Friday, and a little bit of extra stuff at the end there. So hope you enjoy it. I'll see you after the video. So day one, this was when I put the tarantulas into their new enclosure. And uh, that night I went ahead and set up my camcorder to just to see what would happen to see how they would go about selecting their den and how long it would take them to really move around and get going um, as you can see there the first one probably the largest one my big girl and she's already moving not much now I'm trying my hand at this voiceover again um, I did get some complaints on my last video that the voice was too low and the music was too high, so I'm gonna try to get it right this time. So as you can see, there really wasn't a whole lot of movement afterward. They just kind of sat around in their spots. And it wasn't until about an hour into the recording that I actually started seeing real movement. There you go, you see some other ones starting to explore. And the interesting thing is that wherever they walk, they tend to put down web. So the webbing itself 
is occurring as they're exploring. So they're just going around laying down web wherever they go and then they explore. And there's the first one inspecting the first den and uh, the other one comes and checks it out and then goes over to the back. Now, I think I mentioned on my last video that they remind me of the uh, Velocir Velociraptors on Jurassic Park, how they go around looking for weaknesses in the enclosure. And there's the largest one seems to be the one that does that. It goes around the top side and kind of looks around in the enclosure and tests the sides. But um, she's also laying down web as she's doing that. So we're well into about an hour and a half here and there's still a couple that have not really moved very much. The other ones are just kind of exploring and going in and out of the little tunnels and everything and uh, trying to find their, their place. So now the other large one is kind of moving around but not much and then next thing you know they start kind of moving and exploring as well. They seem to like that front cork bark there, the little cavern that's created there. But one thing I didn't notice, if you, if you might look toward the back there, I know it's kind of hard to see with the plant back there, but they, there's one particular one that seems to, seems to be spending a whole lot of time back there. And you'll see later on what that one was up to. So day two. got the larger one is out and I don't know if you can see it toward the back and there it is where they're spending a lot of time back there there's the large one and she's going around checking the sides of the enclosure but everywhere she goes she lays down web And she goes into the front of the cork park there and I don't know if you can see that but there seems to be a little bit of digging going on there and from the webbing it's formed kind of a bubble there of webbing where the uh, substrate is being dug out but it's being caught by that webbing and it's filling up in the webbing kind of like a garbage bag. So really, mostly only one out exploring on day two. The other ones are just kind of in their burrows, settling in. There's a little bit of movement there on the top cork bark. Now that particular tunnel there doesn't really go anywhere because it's sitting on top of another cork bark. So it's not like they can dig down in it. So I don't know if they'll abandon that one, but there's a couple that seem to go in and out of there. There's one that just kind of stays in that one. So they're not all in the same burrow, which seems to be the case with most of them. They tend to go to the same burrow and just kind of hang out. But in this case, they're, they're separating themselves a little bit that one there's maybe one or two that go in there and just kind of stay in there but the other ones seem to go to the larger burrow in the front and uh, there's a couple that tend to go toward the back
on day three, um, once again, you know, it starts out with not a whole lot of activity, but then after a little while, you start seeing some movement. There's one poking its little feet out, and uh, the larger one seems to be out and about the most, and she's out right now. And as usual, she's going around exploring the top of the enclosure, checking the scenes by the lid, it seems like. And not tons of activity today. And there we have another one. It appears to be digging, maybe moving some substrate. There's the big one. And there's more webbing. If you can tell on the cork bark there right next to where she's laying, there seems to be quite a few strands of web. So as they circle around, they tend to, um, oh yeah, there's a big chunk of substrate being moved right there by the one in the front, a uh, little cave there. But yeah, as they move around, they lay down a lot of web. It's amazing how much web they just put down. I don't know where, they, where it all comes from. So we're about an hour into the two and a half hours. So there's some more changing of tunnels there, going back and forth. So I, what I'm seeing here mostly it seems to be excavating. Um, they're not laying so much web down on the outside but it appears like they're doing more excavating in their cavern pretty much setting up their den. And I didn't realize that something else was happening in that front little cave there. And uh, you'll see a little, in a little bit what exactly was happening, but I, I don't know if I captured it here or if it occurred and then they just kind of pushed it out. But um, yeah, it looks like there's a little molt sitting there in front of that big cavern. So I decided to take a closer look and there you go there's a lot of webbing going on there you can see it now and you see that bubble I was telling you about where they kind of pushed the uh, substrate out onto the webbing and it caught it but it appears to be uh, some legs sticking out there which probably is it's a molt and I didn't even realize that that was going on so there's webbing all around but it's very light you can't very you can't see it very well unless you have light like this and this is what's been going on in the back they actually started excavating right here and made a little tunnel there and i'm not sure if it connects with anything and over here they've got that secondary cave underneath that top cork bark and uh, that particular cave doesn't really go anywhere because there's not um, there's a cork bark underneath, so I don't know if they tunnel it. And there's the molt that I got out of there. So there's that bubble I was telling you about right in front of that large cave. Day four. I got a little bit smarter and I put some... Uh, some foam board behind and underneath the enclosure so that I'd cut down on the reflection. I still see reflection of my chair there in the background. And if you notice there in the foreground, you see the little legs come out waving around. That was pretty much the extent of the 
action that happened on day four. Day four was very uneventful. Had a tarantula kind of poke its head out and stick its legs out and wave, and that was pretty much it. And on day five, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I figured they'd have established their burrows and kind of webbed up a little bit enough to where they were satisfied. So uh, again, I didn't really expect a whole lot because on day four, they really didn't do much. But I don't know, you see the little legs sticking out there on the top where the top cork bark is. And I saw some legs kind of sticking out on the bottom. There we go. And uh, so we're getting a little bit of exploration. One got brave and came out. You can see the webbing there where it walked across. And they keep making little trails going back and forth between the three different burrows that they've started. So again, it looks like there's a little bit of excavating going on back there on the back burrow. Some webbing back and forth. And I'm kind of wondering if the webbing itself is kind of like a trail that they make that connects them between all of the burrows. Seems to be the same kind of triangular pattern that they go in walking back and forth, laying down web. If you notice, they seem to avoid the, um, the corner there where the water dish is, but most of the webbing takes place on the cork bark itself and around the little twigs that I put there. So again, excavating in the back, more webbing, and it appears to be some thirsty work because it came down to get a drink. And now the big girl's out. And I thought she was gonna get a drink, but she didn't. And I thought this was funny. This one started walking around, but decided to go back for another drink. So on this day, mostly what I'm seeing here is excavating toward the back burrow and a whole lot of webbing. Just back and forth, back and forth, just laying down the web. And I find it kind of funny that usually within that two and a half hour time period that I record, by the time I'm reaching the end of that two and a half hour, they tend to just go into their burrows and disappear. It's almost like they know they're being recorded. <laughs> And there it goes, it just takes off. And that was really the end of the recording there. Day six. Day six was Friday, a Friday night and I expected a whole lot more action because I usually feed on Friday. So I'm dropping some discoid roaches there and what I usually do when I feed my Balfouri is I will have a tendency to pick some larger prey, but I'll crush the heads on them so that they're still moving. They, they're still alive, but they are not really, um, they're kind of maimed and they just sit there and wiggle and it makes it easier for them to get them. But then I'll throw in some smaller prey that 
I won't do anything to and just let them run around so that they can capture them themselves. So that's usually my routine and I'll drop it on the webbing so that they of course can sense the movement and it'll entice them to come out and get the prey. So I was really excited, hoping that I would capture some good eating and you know maybe see them sharing a meal or snatching a piece away from each other and that kind of thing, which is what they're known for. But um, I was very surprised with what happened. So I've sped up the, the uh, video here so you can don't have to sit there forever watching but there was not a whole lot of action for a while and all of a sudden one gets curious now keep in mind this has been sped up a little bit well actually I slowed it down here for the feeding part but it sat there for a good while, you know, feeling the prey moving around, and I expected a full-on attack, but it just came out, investigated it, and went right back in. So we've got roaches wiggling around and moving, and nothing's happening. So I can only imagine that it was either a factor of the light being on. I don't, I don't know if you noticed how the light kind of got dimmer and dimmer as the days went by I was experimenting to see how low I can get it and still capture some decent video so it's dark relatively dark here my camcorder does a pretty good job of picking up low light but um, you know I, I don't know if it was a factor of the light or the fact that they were in a new enclosure or that they had not webbed up much yet you know most of the time they have a good mat of webbing before they come out there's my big girl again. She comes out and starts investigating. Spends a great deal of time toward the top and just walks around and really just ignores the food. Now, this is not typical. Most of the time they'll come out and immediately start grabbing prey. Sometimes they'll grab two at a time and uh, move off to a corner of an enclosure and just start eating. And, um, you know, th that's pretty much what happens. There's a feeding frenzy that occurs and, you know, they all kind of make off with their own food and either retreat to a burrow or go to a corner of the enclosure. But in this case, it came out, it wandered around, it walked all over the prey, and really none of them ate. They just kind of ignored the food and mostly it seems like they were busy laying down web and working on their burrows. Now, it could be a thing that maybe some of them are in pre-molt or had just molted, like on day three, the one that molted. So um, I'm not really sure about that. They do tend to molt pretty close to each other. And there you go. See, it just walked over the prey and it examined them for a little bit, but then just moved on. Didn't pick up a single one, but it's just going around laying down web focusing on that back burrow and back into the front burrow it goes and I have a suspicion that they have connected that back burrow with the front burrow because it seems like some will go in that back burrow and the next thing you know one comes out from the front burrow or the same one comes out I'm not really sure So again there's some excavating going on you see the movement there and that bubble is getting bigger the opening to that bottom cave is almost gone so this is day 12 this is the day that I'm making this video and as you can see they've pretty much webbed up quite a bit they've got it going above the, the surface of the substrate into the twigs there and they've really concentrated on that back burrow that seems to be their main burrow that's where they go in and out for the most part. So they've got a nice funnel going on there. There's the front burrows, the one that is on the top cork bark. Like I said, maybe one or two hangs out here, but not a whole lot. And I don't think that they've connected that. 
and this is the front burrow the big burrow the big cave and as you can tell the bubble has burst and all that substrate's just kind of spilled out but you can tell that they've been doing a whole lot of excavating here and that's kind of what they do So as you saw, um, things didn't go quite as I expected them to. I was hoping that I would capture a whole lot more activity, but it just seems like they kind of wait a little bit and then they really start taking off as far as the webbing is concerned. Now one of the issues that I think was, was going on here is that because I had dim light going on, they don't exactly like light. Most of the time they're not out during the day. I usually see them at night and I don't think it was dark enough in here for them to feel secure enough to come out and do their thing. So if I had had it darker or if I had maybe used colored lights like the red color lights, then they probably would have come out more and I would have seen a whole lot more action. But you know, I just didn't have that available to me so that was the best that I could do. Um, I was surprised that they didn't come out and eat. Normally when you put food in there, a lot of them will usually come out and they'll just start grabbing everything. But I, again, I think it had to do with the new enclosure. They hadn't webbed it up quite well, you know, as much as they normally do. And of course there was light. So that was an issue that I ran across as well. Um, now that I've moved them back to my shelf where I normally keep them, it stays pretty dark there even during the day. So I tend to see a whole lot more activity now. And as you saw there at the end, they've webbed up a whole lot more from when I stopped recording to this point right now. So they've done a whole lot of, of webbing up between that time frame, which I wish I would have captured that instead of what I did capture. I do plan on doing more. I do plan on recording more of their activities and so on. I do have an LED strip light that I've purchased that has red lights on it. So hopefully I'll be able to set it up and get some recording with some decent lighting, but it'll just be all red because of course, you know, that's they don't see in that spectrum and it seems like it's dark to them so that's something that i have planned for the future so that's it for me today i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give me a like if you want to see more subscribe if you want to support this channel i do have a redbubble store i'll post a link in the description below any of the proceeds that come from the redbubble store will go directly to help support and grow this channel until next time keep loving them tarantulas